Good afternoon, Dr. Mohammed and commissioners. Um, we have one, two, three, four. Uh, sorry, everyone's clicking on. I'm losing track of your your faces. <laughs> Do we have enough for a quorum, Dr. Mohammed? I'm Yes, it's like we have five commissioners present, so we will have a quorum. Okay. All right. Um, I will attempt to call this meeting to order, and I have some big shoes to fill because Amber is so swell at procedure. Um, so I will uh, start the meeting with looking at our, uh, well, I guess we need to take attendance. Let's do that first. Off to a great start. And um, Commissioner Barnett, before we get the meeting started, I just want to read the uh, disclaimer for the viewing audience related to how to participate in the meeting today. Uh, so I'm going to dive in and go ahead and read this uh, disclosure, I guess. So uh, thank you all, uh, Vice Chair Barnett. Uh, good evening. My name is Ferris Muhammad. I'll be facilitating the Zoom meeting. Here are a few housekeeping items for this virtual meeting. This meeting is being broadcast and recorded on the City of Lawrence YouTube channel. The public chat function is disabled. All chats will go directly to me. When you are not participating in the meeting, please mute your microphone. When you are participating in the meeting, please keep your video on. When you are not participating in the meeting, please turn your video off. You, still, you will still be able to hear the meeting. You can turn your video back on when you are participating. Turning your video off when you are not participating allows the active meeting participants to be seen on the screen. If you have any trouble, please send me a chat. The city reserves the right to mute microphones and or turn off people's video to minimize distractions. Please remember to state your name every time you speak for the benefit of those listening remotely. And now I'll turn the meeting over to Vice Chair Barnett. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, let's get started with approval of the minutes from August 9th, 2021. Um, I'll give everyone a moment to review the minutes. Uh, please let me know if you need longer. And Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Okay, uh, this is Commissioner Barnett. Um, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes from August 9th, 2021? This is Commissioner Emerson. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the minutes from August. This is Commissioner Stevens, I second. This is Commissioner Barnett. I have a motion by Commissioner Emerson and a second by Commissioner Stevens. I'll take a roll, roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Sheldon Sherman. Yes, agree. Uh, Commissioner Emerson. Aye. Commissioner Stevens. Aye. Commissioner Haswood. Aye. And Commissioner Barnett, uh, motion passes to approve minutes from August. Uh, we are going to receive the case update um, not live this evening um, as we usually do, but we do have the case update in the report. Um, Dr. Muhammad, do you have any suggestions on how to proceed with this? Should commissioners, if they have questions, submit them to uh, your office or to um, the prosecutor's office? Or how do we want to handle any questions about this case report? 
Yes, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. Yes, the uh, case report that uh, usually is conducted or uh, developed by uh, Elizabeth Hafoka, she was able to get that to me. I was able to send that out to all the commissioners. So if any commissioners do have any questions surrounding the case report, you can ask those questions now and I can get that to her. She can view this or uh, the recording of this and or you can send myself an email or an email directly to her with any questions you may have and she'll try to get a follow up response to you in a timely manner and or address it next month. Uh, when she'll be back at the meeting. This is Commissioner Barnett. Commissioners, does anyone have any questions about the case update? This is Commissioner Emerson. I don't have any questions. I still have. I still am curious about what happens um, when um, cases are referred to ACCI um, and uh, what typical, you know, do those callers actually call them once they are referred? Do they? Um, what type of supports are they re receiving? So uh, we do have a high volume of referrals over to them. Um, so I'm always curious about what happens to those calls. But um, as it relates to the report itself, no, I do not have specific questions. This is Commissioner Barnett seeing no other questions. We have a historical marker committee appointment update. Sorry, this is Commissioner Barnett. I don't know who give who is giving that update. It is certainly not me. So, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. Uh, so, the item on the agenda as it relates to the historical marker committee appointment. Uh, this was addressed at you all's last commission meeting about a commissioner being appointed to that committee. Uh, my belief is that I think last year around October there were some conversations surrounding a marker committee to be able to place markers throughout the city to sort of uh, memorialize. Uh, different people or uh, throughout the city. And my understanding was there was an agreement to have some representation from the Human Relations Committee. Uh, I believe there was a uh, Mark Logan, of Commissioner Mark Logan, I believe was appointed uh, before. So there was some follow-up conversation, I believe Chairperson um, Sellers wanted to address at this meeting to see, um, will somebody still be able to serve in that capacity and or uh, would there be some entertainment? It was, was someone entertained uh, an appointment of another human relations commissioner to be uh, joined in on that uh, committee related to the historical marker? This is Commissioner Barnett. Um, I are are we saying that Commissioner Logan is no longer able to serve in that capacity, Dr. Muhammad? Uh, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. Uh, my understanding was that the, I think last month, uh, the uh, Historical Marker Committee was able to convene for the first time. I was in attendance at that meeting, so they were inquiring about who from the Human Relations Commission would serve in that capacity as a representative for this committee commission. Um, my understanding was that uh, Commissioner Mark Logan was assigned, uh, but they were just curious if that would still be standing, and if not, um, will Commissioner Mark Logan be able to share if he still plans to serve in that uh, position and or would he like to uh, relinquish his role on that as, on that committee and see if somebody else, another commissioner would like to be appointed? So I believe that's why that was on the agenda to receive some clarification and be able to uh, report back to the historical marker committee related to the Human Relations Commission stance. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you so much. Um, so it sounds like perhaps uh, myself or chair person sellers needs to reach out to commissioner logan to get a little clarification and we can figure that out and hopefully then report back at the next meeting i don't want to um replace him before we hear from him and seeing as he is not here um i just want to be a little respectful but now everyone who's present this evening knows that the opportunity is open and um, hopefully someone will consider it for our next meeting. Uh, does that sound like an appropriate next step? Commissioners, any objection to that? 
Um, this is uh, Commissioner Emerson. Um, I was, I had a, a point of inquiry. Uh, when is the next, next historical uh, marker meeting? Because uh, I was just kind of curious if they were expecting um, for um, a representative from our committee to uh, be in uh, person or not, or just be present at their next meeting. I just want to make sure that that doesn't, um, our communication with that doesn't, um, delay when we're supposed to be there. So that was my only question. Um. Uh, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. Uh, I believe from the last meeting, there were some conversations surrounding looking at comparable cities to do some research to see what kind of policies they have in place as it relates to how they go about the different types of markers throughout the city, uh, timelines, policies, uh, involvement, and those types of things to kind of have Bring, be able to bring forth a sort of a, a proposal draft. I think after some period of time to be uh, provided, they was going to kind of circle back around and decide when to meet again. I believe that meeting should be coming up in a few weeks. I'll check my email shortly to see if I can find any additional communication as it relates to when they're meeting next. Um, nevertheless, if I hear back, I can forward or share out uh, that communication to this uh, entire commission about the next meeting that the uh, Historical Market Committee will be having. Uh, this is Commissioner Emerson. Uh, thank you. So, um, uh, Commissioner uh, Barnett, uh, just on that note, you know, do I have any um, uh, concerns with what you propose? Um, no, I do not um, at this time. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Commissioner Emerson. Moving on to agenda item number three, terms and attendance. Uh, I believe at the last uh, commission meeting, we did talk a little bit about um, absenteeism and um, also our bylaws and uh, excused absences, et cetera, to remain on the commission. Dr. Muhammad, do you have any clarification on this terms and attendance line item for the agenda this evening? Yeah, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion, um, addressing attendance first. I believe at the last commission meeting, there was some conversation about the commission wanting to circle back and uh, visit what the bylaws and uh, Chapter 10 ordinance speaks about as it relates to uh, what's expected as far as attendance. And um, is there a tracking mechanism that's in place to be able to see exactly how often commissioners are being able to attend meetings? And if there's some uh, larger conversation need to happen about the frequency of meetings, of course, at one point last year, this commission was meeting quarterly, I believe. Um, that changed towards the end of last year to where there was an agreement for this commission to meet monthly. And so I believe the commission was going to have some discussion and dialogue surrounding um, is that still doable and does that suffice or uh, is that feasible for all the different commissioners, commissioners and have some discussion related to that. Uh, to the second part related to terms, um, there has been some discussion as relates to many of the commissioners currently who are serving on this uh, commission. Uh, terms ending, uh, I believe this month, I know some have um, registered or filled out the uh, proper documents to request to be able to serve another term. Of course, based on the uh, bylaws, com uh, commissioners are only allowed to serve two consecutive, uh, two full consecutive terms. Uh, so I know some people are planning to fulfill that second term. There was some conversation out of the city manager's office uh, in conjunction with the mayor about what's the best way to proceed because as of now, it's sort of uh, based on the nine commissioners. There's uh, a shift of five and four, meaning that at one period of time, there'll be five commissioners who term would expire and the next go round or next interval would be four. So trying to spread that out so that the uh, turnover is not so massive at one time to where we sort of deplete um, the commission and have a hard time filling that in a timely manner. So uh, the idea was to entertain a sort of three, three and three to where each uh, three years um, at a ending of a term, three commissioners term would be up. Uh, in order for that to move forward smoothly as possible, there was a request for at least two commissioners, I believe, to serve an additional year so that the math will balance out to where um, the next cycle would be only three commissioners term will be ending at one time versus now. 
where we have four or five commissioners uh, term ending. So uh, I think I sent something out. I know I sent it out to at least uh, chairperson Sellers and had some conversation with her. I believe a couple of commissioners were contacted by uh, Bobby, the uh, senior admin assistant for the city manager's office and asking if anyone would like to serve in those additional, an additional extended uh, term for a year so that that balance can happen in this um, human relations commission can have more of a smoother transition uh, where there's only three terms in and at a time versus four or five. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, for that very comprehensive explanation about terms and attendance. Um, it seems like the only thing really we need to address is attendance. Do we have further discussion on attendance and what that looks like? Um, do we need to pull up the bylaws? Where do you all, my fellow commissioners, want to go on that? This is Commissioner Stevens. I think it'd be interesting to pull up the bylaws, seeing as though every time it seems that there are less and less people that attend. Uh, and if we're doing, if we're wanting to do the work that betters the community and focuses on the community, then I do not think that um, if people can't give one hour or something like that to <clears throat> this commission, that they should be a part of it. Um, I don't feel like this commission is one that just fulfills like, um, like a resume builder or something like that. We're actually trying to do work for the betterment of the community. So I uh, feel very strongly, very adamantly that um, I don't want people playing in my face or in the face of the community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Stevens. Dr. Muhammad, do you happen to have the bylaws pulled up um, or? Yes, thank you. Yeah, yes, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. I can share the screen of the bylaws if you would like. Um, uh, why is Dr. Palmer is doing this? It's Commissioner Emerson. Um, just to kind of add on to um, what um, Dr. Stevens said um, was the fact that um, it, it's it's hard um, to uh, we we since joining um, the commission in the beginning of the year, it's been challenging to um, just get work done and what things that we want to get done when we have not been able to um, have everyone at the table. So um, so I just kind of wanted to add on to that, that um, I'm very thankful that we're looking at this right now. This is Commissioner Barnett. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, could you scroll down to the part about the attendance and absences and excused versus unexcused and consecutive absences, et cetera? This is Commissioner Barna. Is the is it working where we can scroll and look at those absences sections? Yeah, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. On my end, I can see the document scrolling, but for whatever reason, with the share screen right now, it seems to be not scrolling. So I was trying to figure that out. Um, but uh, Commissioner Barnett, if you're able to pull it up and share a screen, we can try to see if it'll work better on your end. Ferris Muhammad, Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. I'm going to try to share my screen one more time using the PDF to see if it is scroll after downloading the PDF versus doing it online. So I'll try to give it another try. 
This is Commissioner Barnett. I have mine pulled up now and switched it over to my screen. So yeah, we can try one more time and then we'll see. I can pull mine up too. This is Commissioner Haswood. I'm trying to look at my inbox from Bobby. I don't see any email from that. You said only a select few were given that email. This is Commissioner Barnett. I believe the only uh, commissioners that received any email about their terms being up were the ones who had expiring terms uh, this September. So okay. I don't believe I don't believe that's you. Okay, thank you. One more, no more, one more year, <laughs> two or seven. So, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion, are you all able to see uh, the section one of their Article 8 uh, attendance? Okay, just want to make sure you all are able to see it on your end. So, please just let me know where you want me to scroll to. Uh, this is Commissioner Barnett. I think if you scroll down, it talks about the um, two consecutive meetings without a valid excuse, the notice to the chair, staff liaison. Um, second consecutive unexcused absence um and here's the process for suspension unless written request to remain on the commission is received by the chair within 30 days of the notification letter um dr muhammad i don't know if anyone is in jeopardy here but um i do agree uh with commissioner stevens i guess as a, a a warning or something you know we are trying to do work here and um certainly i i guess it would be dr muhammad your it would fall under your purview or um and or chairperson sellers purview to know who has excused absences and unexcused absences and sending the notification letter, et cetera. Um, is anyone in jeopardy on our commission now of that being done? Um, or have we lost any commissioners as a result of this? Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. I know I did have a conversation with Chairperson Sellers surrounding the attendance of commissioners uh, and to explore and see, to your point, would there be any commissioners currently in jeopardy based on attendance? Um, I know her and I, I think we was gonna circle back around to kind of really give that a, a thorough, uh, explore that thoroughly. Uh, Cause I know people have different means of communication. Sometimes people may communicate that to myself that they won't be in attendance at a meeting. I try to usually share that to Chairperson Sellers or if they communicated that directly to chairperson sellers or to uh, the senior admin assistant, Bobby and the city manager's office. So I uh, just wanna do make sure that we do our due diligence to ensure that uh, nobody's being unfairly labeled uh, as being delinquent in their attendance as relates to this commission meeting. So uh, I can double check with chairperson sellers on that. I know she mentioned that she'll try to be in attendance at this meeting towards the end based on some prior obligations. Uh, so her and I probably can follow up offline about some about it. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Does anyone else have any questions about the process or do any other commissioners? Uh, I'm open to receiving comments, suggestions, anything like that. Um, you know, when we have a volunteer commission, it's always so tough to um, get people to actually want to put in the same amount of effort. Um, so any questions or comments before we move on? This is Commissioner Stevens. <clears throat> I was just wondering if in there it talks about, you know, like regardless of whether people have excused absences, if we haven't seen them in like months and months and months, uh, like what is that doing to help the commission? That's what that's what I'm I'm wondering. I'm wondering if there are any rules or regulations on that like i don't i'm not looking for like punitive punishments or anything like that like i don't want to go back to middle school or or whatever but i just like if you're not here you're not here like i just don't understand why people are playing um yeah that's all thanks 
Thank you, Commissioner Stevens. Um, actually, I think that's a really good point. So long as someone has excused absences, I don't believe there's a mechanism to remove them from the commission um, in the bylaws uh, that I have seen. So let me just double check. Um, um, it's expected to, the commissioners are expected to attend all regularly scheduled meetings, I suppose, um, with that. If there's no attendance, then you're not fulfilling your expected obligation. I suppose uh, Ms. Wheeler's office could get into the legal interpretation of our bylaws and the action we can take to perhaps remove someone and replace them with someone who's willing to put in the work. And that's a conversation that we can certainly have with the legal department, Dr. Mohammed and Chair Sellers. Um, because I agree, it's, it's really frustrating for everyone who has been showing up this specifically for the last year and a half, every single month, um, because it's delaying us getting our work done. Um, so I, I don't have any other further comment other than I would like to know if we are able to go ahead and remove someone who's been absent, excused, absent, and hasn't been here for the last seven or eight months, I would, I guess I would like to know what action we can take to replace that person with a more active commissioner. And with that, I'll close out the discussion if there are no more questions. Oh, Commissioner Sheldon Sherman, yes. So just procedurally, I'm wondering if we should consider amending the bylaws to just make this section a bit more clear and say who the notice needs to be given to. I think this would help Dr. Muhammad in terms of sometimes it goes to the chairperson, sometimes it goes to him, sometimes it goes to the mayor's office and say that the notice, you know, that you're absent has to go to, you know, we can decide who that has to go to. I also think that maybe we need to define who decides if it's an excused absence or not. That seems very nebulous to me. Um, I don't know if that, you know, again, this is just points for discussion. That might be Dr. Muhammad, that might be the chairperson. Um, and then we also could, to your point, Commissioner Stevens, add, you know, six, I'm just throwing things out there. These are just numbers, but six excused absences result in the same sort of removal from the commission. Um, I just think if we made that more clear, it would be easy to track. And then it might be helpful in the um, agenda that we receive for the week. If you have to give notice, you know, a certain number of days in advance, if we then can see in that actual agenda, these, these commissioners are excused. Because as you guys are saying, you know, we show up and we don't know, some people may have a very legitimate valid excuse for not being there. And some people may just have not responded at all. And so if we could at least see um, who was excused and who wasn't excused, we actually could be tracking it as well, not just Dr. Muhammad, although that would ultimately fall within his purview, as you said, Commissioner Burnett. This is Commissioner Barnett. Um, I am happy to add that to the Chapter 10 rework. Um, while we're doing that, we might as well amend the bylaws. And I imagine there may be some crossover there with uh, duties and powers, et cetera. So um, I'm happy to put that on that subcommittee's work. Commissioner Emerson. Uh, yes, this is Commissioner Emerson. So that's a. Uh, uh, this is one of these things and where we've been talking about it uh, for a last, the last couple um, meetings. And so, you know, considering that we are going to be coming um, in uh, hopefully next month with our recommended um, proposal uh, to the larger body, uh, which we'll be getting into just a moment. I feel like this could be a part of those recommendations uh, for changes uh, that we can look at so we can actually um, move from the talking and, and make some actions on um, getting some active uh, commissioners um, in this body. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you so much, Commis Commissioner Emerson. Um, are there any other comments on that other than uh, our subcommittee, the Chapter 10 subcommittee, will revisit that and um, kind of bring it back to the entire commission for entire Human Relations Commission for review? Yes, Commissioner Haswood. Yes, yeah, so this is Commissioner Haswood. I just wanted to kind of put this out there. Um, 
in trying to maybe make this amendment, do we want to take into consideration if someone were to have an excuse absent, um, they could go back and watch the recording and kind of do things remotely. Do we want to kind of take that into consideration? Um, I understand being here at this monthly meeting is important, um, but also you can get some work done too, um, just by throughout the rest of the days of the month. Thank you. This is Commissioner Stevens. I, I like to second that accessibility piece. Thank you. This is Commissioner Barnett. Okay, we'll get to work and, and bring back some of those good ideas next meeting. Um, so we have a budget update. The city of Lawrence passed their budget, I think, last week, two weeks ago. I don't remember. Time flies. So anyway, the budget's been passed. Um, and so we have a budget update from someone other than me. <laughs> so Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion, uh, here on the agenda, as far as the budget update goes, uh, my apologies, I could have provided additional clarity for that. I know Chairperson Sellers wanted an update as it relates to the Human Relations Commission's budget and what that might look like. Uh, I sent that out maybe a, earlier today or earlier this evening, maybe around five o'clock or so. Uh, hopefully you all received that. Um, but it was just the uh, the authorized spending report to kind of illustrate or show in the account uh, with the breakout of all the different uh, accounts for like printing, advertising, service contract, postage and freight, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each one of those line items to kind of show what the current ending balance is. Uh, I spoke with the legal department last week, and I do know they was able to send me this document, but also wanted to follow up later this week with some additional uh, more uh, drill down of the uh, what the budget looked like uh, once we incorporate uh, what the budget may look like for the, uh, what is it, festivals of culture, or co festivals of culture. I think that was not able to happen this year or last year based on COVID-19. So there was some, uh, some analysis being conducted to see kind of does that help to uh, increase what the current budget may be as far as you all having access to those dollars and how to properly use those funds. So uh, I did send out the report that you all should have, I think, showing a total available balance right now of uh, $5,606.61 based on this report. So that was the uh, budget update. So uh, thank you, so uh, this is Commissioner Emerson, uh, Dr. Palm, and if you would be able to uh, send that up once more, I did not uh, receive that report. I, I received the, the meeting uh, agenda, so I was just hoping that you might be able to send that out again. Um, thank you. Commissioner Haswood, I didn't get that either. This is Commissioner Barnett. I don't believe I received it either. Um, so uh, just maybe a recent and we can all look over it uh, before the next meeting. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, the next agenda item, agenda item number five, the ordinance research update. Um, I can't remember when the meeting was. Uh, the city commission had a meeting about the ordinance updates when um, a year and a half ago when uh, then Mayor Ananda announced uh, that she would like to revisit the equity of our ordinances. Um, the legal department looked it over and that it is advancing forward through the city commission. Um, uh, Dr. Muhammad, would you like to give an update on that or shall I, or I'm, I don't know all the details, but I did watch the video. Yes, Ferris Mohammed, Director of Equity and Inclusion. I'm a little hesitant to say this time that I sent you all an email of an update on that. Uh, but I know I sent out an email uh, trying to provide some clarification with the link to the, uh, I think, September 7th last uh, city commission meeting. That was on Tuesday. Toward the end of the meeting, after I think it was like the three hour, 20 minute mark or something along those lines, uh, the legal department brought forward the conversation surrounding uh, the ordinances and uh, codes that were on the docket that they wanted to bring forth to the city commission for their consideration on what they wanted to continuously move forward with or repeal or whatever action they may want to take or not take. Um, they had some bit of a conversation surrounding that. I know community member. Uh, uh, 
Chris Flowers had some uh, commentary on the public nudity ordinance. Uh, he had some conversations surrounding that. I believe as of now, as it stands, the city commission is still uh, taking those recommendations of the legal department into consideration. And they want to have some additional dialogue about how to move forward with some of that. Uh, my understanding or impression that I believe I received was that uh, maybe early next year, there may be some additional uh, action being taken on that. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you so much, Dr. Muhammad. Um, I'm hopeful that as the, the city commission revisits everything in the city code that our chapter 10 rewrite, um, perhaps our recommendation could be included in that pending review by the legal department. And I guess that's a great transition if no one has any further questions on the ordinance research update to our committee reports. Yes, Dr. Muhammad. <laughs> So, Ferris Mohammed, Director of Equity and Inclusion, I did just recognize the email that I thought I did send out to you all related to the budget. In our uh, system, there's two different groups. One I have down is Human Relation Board members, then one is just Human Relations. And so I sent it to the Human Relations, so you all did not receive that. So I'll resend that document out to you all shortly and try not to make that mistake again. This is Commissioner Barnett. No worries, Dr. Mohammed. Um, Okay, so do our commissioners, do you, you all have any further questions about the ordinance update? And as that's moving through the full city commission, you wanna move on to our chapter 10, our involvement in it? Yes. Okay, all right, seeing no further questions, um, committee reports. I will be happy to give alongside uh, Commissioner Emerson our chapter 10 update. What I'm going to do actually is, um, uh, Chairperson Sellers created a document that is lovely and um, looks great. I'm going to scooch it over here so I can share my screen. Hopefully I can share my screen um, and everyone can see what was created. And this will kind of help guide our discussions through um, each of our committee subcommittee updates. So as uh, Chairperson Sellers helped us kind of refocus and um, address really uh, the policy work that we're doing and outreach work that we're doing as a commission and uh, refocus it to how it relates to the city of Lawrence's strategic plan that was enacted right around the same time, uh, about this time last year, I think. And so the first thing is uh this is really great so it's it has the the committee here the recommendation and then how it relates to the strategic plans uh strategic plan outcomes um and commitment so um the first thing is uh for chapter 10 um i our subcommittee does have a draft with some comments on it. And the, the steps we're taking are twofold. The first thing we're going to do is discuss this with the legal department. Um, and uh, because we do have some very specific legal questions within the ordinance, or sorry, within the code changes, chapter 10 code changes. And so we want to know what they think of that and um, if we're on the right track, if what we're suggesting is consistent with updated law, um, et cetera. And so uh, that's the first thing. And then once we get a better feel for that, we're going to do some outreach, um, which kind of involves um, the cross-cutting work between city departments and other commissions. Uh, we don't want to talk about, for instance, source of income and housing, if the uh, housing authority has already made a decision or discussion or had a discussion on this. Um, and so we wanna involve all of the other uh, strategic partners. So that's kind of where we're going with that. So. In getting started with the recommendation, uh, we want to revisit the director position and duties. Uh, Dr. Muhammad's position was not uh, in effect until last year or maybe even early this year. 
<laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's been a, been a year. Um, so let's, we want to take a look at the duties and uh, powers of the director of DEI as it relates to the director of the Human Relations Commission, because there is certainly crossover, but we don't want to overwork either department and we want to make sure that we have um, consensus on duties and powers and where they lie. So, uh, and then of course that's sound fiscal stewardship and really I think some of this stuff is a little tough to apply to the strategic plan um, as it involves more bureaucratic processes instead of community outreach, but I tried. Um, and then one, another thing that we discussed is adding source of income as a class, um, as a protection. And uh, we wanted to discuss that with our community partners. There has been um, a lot of discussion about that over the last uh, several months and in last year. And I know that the legal department did issue a legal opinion as to whether or not we could add source of income in our housing ordinance. And um, I think that we would like to really talk to the um, housing authority and other, uh, all of our housing community partners and figure out if this is one, if it's needed, if it's supported by those interested uh, agencies. And then also if it is, inconsistent with state law, is there a way that we can get around it? Um, and is that this something that our city, our community truly wants and that we would be able to or be interested in expending the resources to defend if challenged? So anyway, um, that's thinking like way, way ahead, but that's kind of where we're going with that. Additionally, considering student status as a protected class, um, discussing that with interested community partners, a lot of college towns have that as a class um, and uh, like, like Austin has student status um, as a protected class in their non-discrimination ordinance. So, um, and again, this strategy here is really just dump everything in and then we can kind of cut away and, and revisit what the commission as a whole thinks. Um, and then we want to revisit the verified complaint procedure amendment, or we want to make an amendment to the verified complaint procedure. The way it is now you, to submit a complaint that is to be verified, it has to be um, uh, sworn and notarized, and that seems prohibitive, prohibitive and um, inconsistent with trying to be as accessible as possible. Um, however, we need to talk to the legal department to ensure that this is, it, perhaps that's a verified complaint because that's what they need to go ahead and um, send it in and file a civil action. Um, so we just need to talk to the legal department about that. And then um, we want to revisit the committee's powers and duties. This is important, obviously, because of this uh, refocused vision of our subcommittees and you know up until a few months ago we probably had 30 different subcommittees that had developed over the last five years and so um getting these subcommittees committing to them and saying this is really how we should revisit um and and renew our human relations commission powers and duties and getting that in, in the ordinance is kind of what we're looking at there for that change. And then um, also interested in revisiting the complaint and hearings process. Um, we have a few things in mind based on what other cities have done, similarly situated cities. And then we want to say, um, you know, see what the entire Human Relations Commission, you all think of this. And then um, there are some duplicative subsections that outline powers and duties that have been causing confusion um, among those interpreting uh, who is supposed to be doing what, whether it's administrative or this appointed commission members. And then, um, like I said, review legal questions with the city attorney's office and then uh, the equal uh, opportunity officer and audit oversight uh, position 
is something that we need to clarify because we believe there may be some confusion there. So with that, uh, Commissioner Emerson, who is on my subcommittee, do you have anything to add? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Katie, uh, Commissioner Barnett does a wonderful job of uh, bringing this all together, explaining it and re-explaining it. Uh, and I'm always um, thankful uh, for her leadership um, as we go through uh, Chapter 10 um, ordinance. Um, and at the end of the day, it's really about being able to make that process, make this process easier for um, the people who live here in Lawrence. So if there is, it is something discriminatory that you believe is happening, that you're able to get the supports that you need from um, this body, as well as giving us in the Structure. Um, so we're not just sitting here and spinning our wheels conversation meeting after meeting um, that we're actually able to have um, the, the foundation behind us to, to move us forward. So it's been um, a very, um, a, how would I say, enlightening, um, insightful um, process. And so uh, I'm just really thankful for all the work that this committee is doing. Um, and I'm really hoping that um, when we get to this final project, um, uh, that we actually have something that is, um, as Commissioner Barnett was saying, renewed um, and is able to help us move forward. So um, that's all I have to say. Good job. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you so much, Commissioner Emerson. Any other questions before we move on to program development subcommittee update? Um, this is Commissioner Stevens. I had a question about, um, <clears throat> you said it was source of income. I was just wondering, is that like um, people that are receiving um, like food stamps or things like that, or is it also, or and or, is it like sex workers in the community or people like that? I was just wondering. That is such a good question. And let me tell you, um, give me one second to switch here. Okay, let me read what I have here. A uh, source of income means lawful, regular, and verifiable income, including but not limited to housing vouchers and other subsidies provided by the government or non-governmental entities, child support or spousal maintenance, but does not include future gifts. So uh, your the answer to your question is yes to the former and no to the latter. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I would love to see, well, I, I know that, um, well, I've, I've read lots of research, of course, um, and statistics that say that sex workers are at a significant <clears throat> danger just in general. Um, but I also believe that um, people that work um, as sex workers and that do sex work deserve to be protected as well. And so um, as sex workers do have verifiable, lawful um, <clears throat> sources of income, I would be interested in seeing whether we could add that to the protected classes as well or something. Sure, this is Commissioner Barnett. Um, so yes, and I think that that's not, that's not limited to just sex work. I mean, those the you can, you start there and it kind of snowballs. So I'm going to add that to the list and see what other cities do. Um, see if we can pull some language. Um, and then again, just, this is kind of what we're doing. If you all have ideas that you'd like to share in advance of the next meeting to make our meeting more effective and productive, please do let me know now that you have a list of kind of what we're working on. Um, you can send it to myself or to the subcommittee. Just don't send it to um, the entire commission or too many people as to make it um, uh, violate coma. Uh, and um, then, and then we can add that. Yes. Did someone say something? Sorry. Oh, sorry. This was Commissioner Emerson, and I was like, oh, that's uh, that kind of spun some some thinking. I was like, oh, I wonder um, when it comes to you know. Um, refugees, um, if there's anything that we can do do there. I was like, um, it just kind of made me start thinking about how um, we can really be within um, legal parameters, uh, kind of reimagining, rethinking some of this. So I was like, that's, 
Uh, thank you, Commissioner Stevens. It just kind of made my wheels start to turn a little bit more. This is Commissioner Stevens. Thank you all for <clears throat> this. I think it's fascinating. I also think it's a great opportunity for us to, you know, uh, protect more people that deserve protecting. So thank you so much. Yeah, this is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you. Um, so who's on the program development committee? Do we have someone who's able to give the update here? Me, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Hadwood. <laughs> okay, um, so we um, did this quite a while back <laughs> and I believe the intent for the education office hours initiative was to have at least a de designated person from the commission kind of available, readily available to help assist the community um, or also go out into the community. Uh, civic engagement day with high school. So uh, when we were reading through chapter 10, I kind of had a uh, realization that what if somebody was getting discriminated, but what if they were under the age of 18? Um, maybe the parent or the guardian um, was to uh, maybe afraid or did not know the process of how to file a, a complaint of discrimination. Um, so, and some of our youth here in our community are super smart, way smarter than me. And um, having that, engaging that and feeding that to the youth in the community um, would also go to Connected City, um, Equity and Inclusion to a group that oftentimes kind of gets overlooked at and following that, having a youth liaison to this board. Um, so I think this is kind of a movement uh, where always having that youth input, that youth voice, but also building up and leaving that ladder down for other young people to get involved in city work, to get involved in municipality work. Um, and revise the Human Relations Commission pamphlet and providing these to leasing offices. Um, so it's come to my attention a lot of times where some folks don't even know who their landlord is or where the leasing office is, maybe it's not on site of a complex apartment complex or where they live at so having that in in writing um with an updated pamphlet uh, we believe that would provide safe and secure um neighborhoods and strong and welcoming neighborhoods um, but also having these pamphlets in different languages as well uh, for the equity and inclusion in our non-english speakers um, i know this has been probably reiterated throughout the year but revising the Human Relations Commission website, um, making sure that we can keep this up to date, but also identifying community partners who offer diversity, equity, and inclusion educational workshops and lectures. Um, so when I was going through the chapter 10, it, it said um, there was a specific part where it was talking about how we can work with other organizations in our community. Uh, maybe things that we don't necessarily cover and i can't find a one-stop shop that has all these organizations listed out so if we can make that just a little bit easier on our community members um, i think that would be great it'd be improving the efficiency and the effectiveness in the process of things and as well as trying to provide those in different languages for our non-english speakers as well This is Commissioner Barnett, Commissioner Haswood, and everyone else on that subcommittee. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm just, this is amazing. First of all, I thought we had, um, I didn't know that our pamphlets and everything was only in English. Um, I, um, and then also the web page has been a source of angst for this entire commission for many years. Um, and so if, you know, we, the, the ideas behind all of this is just, it's so great. I really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And Commissioner Hazard, I'm not too sure. I don't, haven't seen the pamphlets firsthand. And I think I saw Dr. Muhammad kind of nodding his head. I think the city of Florence website does translate, but I've heard some concerns where translation might not be as efficient. It, if you're a Spanish speaker, you can obviously tell that it was copy and paste Google Translate. Um, but I think Dr. Muhammad might be able to speak more. Yes, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. Um, a couple of things 
uh, as far as the HRC pamphlets, I do have two different boxes of uh, pamphlets that are were done just a couple of months ago. I know I shared that information out before to say, hey, we do have some uh, new updated pamphlets. Please let me know on what you all think is the best way to sort of uh, distribute that to you all. If you have plans on distributed, distributing that to different schools or wherever that might be, uh, one is in English and one box is in Spanish. Um, so I, I do agree with your point, Commissioner Haswood, as relates to the uh, accuracy, as relates to translating certain documents. Uh, the communications department here for the city of Lawrence and I have been in conversation about ensuring that even with our strategic plan that we do have all those various documents translated in different language um, and as, as accurately as possible. I know as it relates to some of the conversation I had earlier this year about COVID-19 and the sense of urgency as it relates to communicating messages out, I did suggest that I prefer if people were able to read something as it relates to some of the COVID-19 materials uh, based on a sense of urgency. So in that regard, I encourage people to err more on the side of uh, language not being as accurate, but at least timely, because the assumption there being that just because somebody speaks English don't mean that they are reading at a certain uh, grade level. But if you can identify some words and get some sense of what's being communicated in a document that could be um, helping to sort of save your life or your health and the welfare of your family, et cetera, then I would prefer uh, to err on that side. Uh, but yes, we do have the pamphlets as it relates to the website. I know there's still some work to be done there in addition to just having all documents translated to serve our community and, and what the future of our community may look like. So some of it is still a work in progress and I appreciate you bringing that, lifting that, elevating that conversation. Um, and this is Commissioner Emerson, uh, Commissioner Haswood. I, I just wanted to say I love, love, love um, the fact that you are um, uh, that your committee has brought in um, uh, trying to um, kind of bring up uh, civic engagement um, in our secondary levels uh, of education and with our students. Um, so, so important. Um, so I just want to say, you know, thank you for um, uh, making that um, intentional in your guys' uh, recommendations. So thank you. This is Commissioner Barnett moving on to the cross cutting work subcommittee. Um, who wants to give the presentation or the update of the cross cutting work subcommittee? Commissioner Stevens, you want to talk through this or do you want me to? Uh, if you feel comfortable doing it, I would love for you to do it. I've ran my mouth enough tonight, I think. Okay, this is Commissioner Sheldon Sherman. So Commissioner Sellers, Commissioner Stevens and I are on this committee. And um, some of our ideas, just as you can see listed here, are to, to begin the development of a fair housing ordinance. This is something that we discussed at a commission meeting. And we kind of said that we would take on that responsibility. And so we don't know if this is something that would fall within our committee or if we want to create a subcommittee to work on this. But it's something that we can do to work with um, other groups in the community to develop this so that we have this for the city of Lawrence. A big uh, topic of conversation that we've been discussing is how the complaints move through kind of the process and whether that is something that should still be in the city prosecutor's office or if that's something that should be moved to Dr. Muhammad's um, area because we feel that Sometimes it's a conflict of interest for it to be in the city prosecutor's office. And we also feel that maybe they don't have the full capabilities to be investigating these um, complaints in the most meaningful way. And with that, we kind of discussed maybe having someone who had a background in social work being a part of the um, office of the director of a diversity and equity and inclusion because it's really important that someone with that background be a part of this process, that it's not just a legal process. And we feel that we're missing a lot of the needs of the community by having that be uh, undertaken purely by attorneys who that's not really their primary area of um, either law or interest, they're prosecutors, and that we would need people with additional backgrounds to be investigating these complaints. Um, Commissioner Barnett, if you could scroll down a little bit. Oh, thank you so much. Um, along with that, we um, 
and I don't know if this is on here. Oh yeah, down at the, the last one, create a case review committee to review no probable cause findings. So I'm new to the commission. And so I don't remember the days when this commission was actually the one reviewing the cases, but I understand that that used to be the case. And um, we were just discussing that potentially we would like to have a greater role in that. And not that that involves us being the ones investigating the complaints, but we do see a lot of no probable cause findings. And we wonder often, you know, Commissioner Emerson, you brought this up tonight, just in the question of what happens when people are referred. We feel like we're very disconnected and removed from the process. And so we had brainstormed potentially having either a subcommittee of this commission or, you know, a few folks who are reviewing those no probable cause findings in more depth than just listening to the um, report at each monthly meeting. And so if that means that those commissioners are actually looking at that investigation and just reviewing what led to that finding, it gives an additional layer kind of, of checks and balances, say, to the entire process to ensure that people are really getting the process that they deserve. Uh, we also talked about the website. Apparently, that's even known issue for everyone. And then finally, I think we're focused on creating transparency and just making sure that we're doing everything that we can to ensure that the process is working smoothly. And so to that end, we discussed developing kind of an annual publication where we could list, and obviously there would be no identifying information, but where we could list here are the number of cases we received, kind of like the reports that we get each month. Here's what happened to those cases. Here's where we found probable cause. Here's where we found no probable cause. Here's, you know, these number of calls were referred here. It gives a level of transparency. It allows the community to see the work that we're actually doing. And it gives us an ability to evaluate ourselves at the end of the year and say, you know, why did we have, you know, no cases where probable cause was found and maybe why, why is that? And so we think that it would give us an additional source of information to really evaluate ourselves and allow the community to do so as well. So Commissioner Stevens, did I miss anything? This is Commissioner Stevens. Now you crushed it. Thank you. Thank you. This is Commissioner Barnett. Um, yes. What a what wonderful work your subcommittee has done. Um, it obviously uh, there's so much uh, overlap between what we all want. Um, I think it's taken a long time for us to get here, but we've got it. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that your subcommittee has done. I did have one question just for the work that uh, Commissioner Emerson and I for our subcommittee. Um, would you like to see that annual report in the um, chapter 10 or bylaws? This is Commissioner Sheldon Sherman. I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, to hold us accountable to making sure that we, we do something like that. Ms. Commissioner Barnett, thank you very much. I see we have Chairperson Sellers and we are at the end of our meeting. Good night, I'm just kidding. Um, yes, Chairperson yes, Sellers, <laughs> we are, uh, that is, uh, we just finished up I, agenda item six, but are happy to go back because I was not stellar in any way tonight in getting anything done. So if there's anything you wanted to talk about, um, Chances are I didn't do it. So go ahead and work back through the agenda and let me know what you think. Oh, that that I would, would want. This is uh, Chairperson Sellers and good evening, everyone. Not that I would want to put anyone through another hour of meeting, but you guys seem to be pretty efficient tonight. So maybe I should be gone more often. This is Commissioner this is Barnett. Commissioner, um, Sheldon Commissioner Barnett did an excellent job, but we did miss you, Commissioner Sellers. So, uh, this is Commissioner Barnett, Dr. Mohammed, is there anything that I didn't cover? Because I know you've been in touch with Chairperson Sellers um, about a lot of these issues as our staff liaison. Is there anything else that you think that she ought to cover this evening? First, Mohammed, Director of Equity and Inclusion, I agree with the other commissioners and saying that you did an excellent job tonight. I think um, circling back, there was a few things that we discussed that perhaps uh, Chairperson Sellers can get some additional insight on. Um, I know we had some conversations surrounding 
let me scroll back down here through the agenda. But I know one of the uh, topics was about uh, attendance. I think you all had fleshed that out some, but I think there were, we landed with some additional insight or a desire and some additional insight from uh, chairperson sellers related to uh, moving forward, what may be expected as it relates to trying to discover what the attendance looked like for all the commissioners and how to properly proceed moving forward. If that's communicating with uh, the city manager's office or city attorney's office or seeing how do you go about uh, once it's discovered that a commissioner has been delinquent in attendance and as far as meetings go, what's the procedure to move forward with um, uh, relinquishing those duties of a commissioner from that person. I think chairperson sellers uh, may have some information about that. And also I know I provided the current budget update for the um, Human Relations Commission versus the city. And I gave you all the final number where we're at right now, but I believe chairperson sellers wanted some additional information about the uh, festivals of culture and wanted to know what the budget looked like for that, which is not in this document here, but the legal department was gonna follow up this week. So to that point, chairperson sellers, I don't know if you had anything that you would like to add as it relates to attendance and your vision as it relates to the accountability there, as well as the uh, budget updates and ideas moving forward. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. This is Commissioner Sellers. Um, just briefly to touch on, thank you for uh, for those reminders. I was looking for my notes while I was you were going through that. I do know on the one in regards to our attendance, I know that um, since the time I joined the commission, uh, we've evolved from quarterly meetings to uh, monthly meetings, and I know that that's had an impact on um, how we address our. Uh, our attendance policy, and I know it was brought up at our last meeting, if we wanted to examine what that looked like um, in ordinance and if we needed to make some updates, but also look at maybe some practices and policy as far as what we would need to do to address um, if it's been brought to the attention that someone, uh, if a commissioner has been, uh, been absent for a particular number of meetings, whether excused or unexcused, and how that reflects their their responsibility uh, to the commission. So um, if times allow, I wanted us to be able to have just some discussion around that to get um, at least to hear what thoughts were from other commissioners. And then if there's an opportunity there for um, any one of our subgroups or if anyone's interested in working on that, or we feel like that that work should be in one of our subgroups, we can talk about that. So. I wanted to give the floor to commissioners uh, to kind of have a discussion on um, just some of their feedback and thoughts that they may have around uh, around attendance as it relates to uh, to the uh, to chapter ten and in our current setting right now. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Chairperson Sellers. We did uh, flesh that out a little bit. Uh, with the help of, I think, an input of almost every single commissioner here this evening, what we landed on was for the chapter 10 subcommittee group to work on um, defining excused, uh, defining uh, participation, and revisiting the accessibility of um, watching videos and participation in that manner. So uh, we have a few things that we can work out and bring back to the commission at the next meeting, but that will go into uh, the chapter 10 subcommittee, but we will amend the bylaws. So we won't put it in the actual ordinance. We'll just amend the bylaws and that will be that subcommittee's responsibility. Did I miss anything, commissioners? Thank you, this is Commissioner Sellers. Thank you, uh, Chair, uh, Chair Barnett. I know, um, and, and I, I can touch base with you, uh, Vice Chair Barnett. I know I wanted some, some more policy language in there as it relates around kind of that initial and any subsequent uh, discussions that need to be had to the point that Dr. Mohammed made. So um, commissioners, if there's anyone that has any additional language around that that they would like to share, feel free to forward that to me. Um, and then Dr. Muhammad, I've already lost my second point. What was he? he said so Ferris Muhammad, director of uh, 
equity and inclusion. I think the second point was about the uh, budget, if you had the some budget. additional information. But I also discovered a third point that we talked about before your arrival that um, you can probably probably provide some clarity on, which was the appointment of the uh, commissioner to the historical marker committee appointment. I made a comment <laughs> earlier that I believe Commissioner Mark Logan was appointed to that position, but I wasn't 100 percent clear on that. So if you could provide insight on that, that'd be helpful as well. Thank you, this is Commissioner Sellers. Um, all right, so in regards, let's start with the budget, um, Commissioner. I know um, there was some initial discussion, uh, not discussion, there were some questions in regards to our um, budget as it relates to the HUD funding that we received. And I know when we started the initial discussions, uh, we um, there was some set aside of monies that were to be used for, um, in the past have been used for the festival of cultures. And we were discussing last year, um, being able to maybe um, utilize those funds in a more, um, and using it to be more impactful in different avenues other than a festival. And so due to the pandemic, we knew that that money had rolled over uh, based on the last conversation we had with, um, with uh, Scott, um, Wagner, who was our liaison prior to you, Dr. Muhammad. And so I know that there was, I know he had mentioned that HUD and I would have to go through and find the email, but I do remember the last email we had was that those funds would be allow for us to roll over and use for this past year. And since we've not really been able to be in a position based on local state and federal um, restrictions and, and guidance around gathering in groups. I just needed to know where that money stood and um, what was our timeline as far as a spin down. Um, to, to my knowledge, I'm thinking we have anywhere between maybe ten to $15,000. And if that's money that's available to us for to initiate any of the projects or recommendations that were presented today, um, then that would be information, for, good information for us uh, to know so that we could start using these subsequent meetings to, to maybe do some planning and, and, and execute, you know, at least getting some initial planning and this, or discussion around use of funds. And so I wanted us to be able to get that information, if not, of course, for this meeting, but for our, uh, our October meeting, um, since I feel like it's about this time where we, we typically discuss it um, along with any our off years of our HUD report and, and end of the year reports and things of that nature. So that's what I wanted to bring to the table was getting a status on those HUD dollars um, that were designated for education and programming that we've been not been able to use in the last few fiscal years and where we stand with that. This is Commissioner Barnett. Thank you, Chairperson Sellers. Um, I would, I'm just wondering if the program subcommittee would be able to examine, you know, what maybe what we could do with those dollars. Um, there is a lot of um, outreach that uh, Commissioner Haswood explained that maybe we could use there instead of the festival of cultures i just wonder if we can kind of assign this um budget delegation or a budget idea to the program development committee to come back with some ideas this is commissioner sellers commissioner haswood do you have any thoughts on on that i know your group has you have an interesting group. So if you would like some support with that, I, I definitely want to make sure you, you have that with your group. And But any thoughts you have on it? Yeah, this is Commissioner Haswood. Um, I would love to take the opportunity to implement that with funding, um, but I would like to, you know, take into the consideration the attendance um, and to have that support. So uh, I'm not doing all the work again. Right. And I mean, I, I don't think we're be, being accountable to this commission and to, and to those who 
in, in the other committees. I know that this has been um, something that we've had to struggle with with program development. We were able to meet and 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 get and uh, synthesize a lot of different pro uh, you know ideas out of it, but um, it has been difficult. And so I would ask if there's any other commissioners, um, not that we're not used to double dipping and, and, and helping out when in need, but um, if there's any other commissioners that would like to do this work, um, in addition, I think we should pose the question to, uh, to Commissioner Falls as well as to Commissioner Logan, um, but if this is something that uh, Commissioner Haswood would like to take the lead on and there's any other commissioners that would like to assist in that work, um, you know, please let me know and we can navigate what that would look like. <clears throat> Sorry, this is Commissioner Stevens. Uh, I'm not volunteering, but I wanted to circle back and say, because of what Representative Haswood has said about being the only one and doing all the work that before we are talking about what it takes to get kicked out of the uh, this, uh, this group and seeing as though we have a representative that's in our um, on the Human Relations Commission and obviously has lots of other work to be doing. Um, I think it's super disrespectful if we look at the way that patriarchy works also that um, we have her doing all the work. So uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Commissioner Stevens. This is Commissioner Sellers. So again, Dr. Muhammad, um, for our October meeting, would you be able to circle back and get that information to us to at least verify what funding is available or where does it stand? Because we have not received a report on it since you became our liaison. And it, I think that's critical knowledge for us to know that, A, where those funding, where that money's, where those funds are and if they're still available to us and if not, where'd they go? Yeah, Ferris Mohammed, Director of Equity and Inclusion. Uh, ch yes, Chairperson Sellers, uh, the legal department is currently working on uh, providing that information now. They were able to send out the current snapshot of where the budget lies now, but as relates to any funding that could have rolled over from previous dollars that was earmarked for the uh, festivals or culture, that's what they're uh, looking at now and trying to discover. So hopefully over the next week or so, we sh they should have that information to me and I can make sure I forward it to you and to the rest of the commission. This is Commissioner Sellers. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Last on our uh, piece was the Circle Marcos appointment. I do remember, and Vice Chair Barnett, please um, help me in my memory of this, because I believe this was somewhere in our transition around this time, that we did have two commissioners appointed to that. It was Commissioner Logan and Commissioner Dahl, and then Commissioner Dahl resigned. And what it sounds like is that that representation from our from the HRC has not been attended. And so um, my thoughts are, and I, and I wanna open this up to discussion, um, that I would like to give Commissioner Logan an opportunity to explain um, himself and, and one, pose the question of whether or not he is so interested in serving on that appointment. And if not, then we need to go through the proper channels of uh, nominating and, and and having someone sit in that position as representation from the HRC, but is that does that sound vaguely correct to you, uh, Vice Chair Barnett? This is Commissioner Barnett. Yes, I remember Commissioner former Commissioner Zoll being on the the uh, Society Committee Board. Um, but yeah, where you landed on that was where this commission landed in your absence um, earlier this meeting was we'd like to give Commissioner Logan an opportunity to explain himself should he ever reappear at one of these meetings. And then we will also um, give him the opportunity to resign from that position or from that appointment to the Historical Society. And then also um, now that we're all aware of that, then one of these, one of us can consider whether or not we'd like to be appointed. Commissioner Sellers, thank you, Commissioner Barnett. Um, so as far as uh, next steps, Dr. Muhammad, that's something that we can discuss um, at a later time as far as giving Commissioner Logan an opportunity to give feedback and 
touch base. Yes, Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. Yes, we can uh, follow up on that uh, this week. If you and I want to touch base and figure out what's the next steps in that process, uh, I'd be more than happy to have that discussion as well. All right, sounds good. This is Commissioner Sellers. Anything else on the agenda that we, Dr. Muhammad, that you need me to circle back on? Looking real quick here. Ferris Muhammad, Director of Equity and Inclusion. I don't think so. I think everything is covered on the agenda. All right, wonderful. We've now hit the moment in our agenda for public comments. If there's anyone from the public who would wish to speak, um, you do have three minutes to provide any public comments. Dr. Muhammad, is there anyone with you that would like to provide public comment? Ferris Mohammed, Director of Equity and Inclusion. No one is here present in person for public comments. Also, I did not receive any registration from any community members that have any comments either. All right, this is Commissioner Sellers. So hearing no one wishing to give public comments, we will close public comments. That now takes us to the end of our agenda. Commissioners, do we have any good and welfare in the order? I will say um, I was hoping to catch um, Commissioner Bloxham at our meeting today. Um, Commissioner Bloxham has completed her second term as commissioner on the Human Relations Commission. And so um, this was her last meeting and wanted to allow her the opportunity to provide um, closing comments before um, rolling off. And so commissioners, if you've not had the chance um, to visit with Commissioner Buxom, I would implore that you send her well wishes and kind words and tell her that she's more than welcome to uh, to join us in, in public comments and, and, and good and, and, and welfare as long as she doesn't ride the rails on us too much. But but again, yes, this is this would be um, Commissioner Buxom's last meeting. I know that she's provided over. I want to say almost eight years, Commissioner Vice Chair Barnett, almost nine years of, of uh, service to the Human Relations, Human Relations Commission. And um, she's someone that I personally have seen speak um, through this commission, as well as uh, in other boards through the Community Police Review Board. And so someone that I admired in, in her passion um, in speaking about the needs of our community. So. Um, she has big shoes to fill, and I know whoever will join the um, commission will will do her position, do her spot justice. So, again, make sure you send a little quick email to Commissioner Bluxom to let her know we she will truly be missed, and that we do appreciate her service to the humans, the HRC. So, without any other questions or comments from every from anyone, going once, going twice. If not, we are adjourned at 7.24 p.m. Commissioners, thank you very much for a productive meeting. And I'll make sure to jump on for the last 20 minutes each time. Take care, everyone. <laughs>